continuing live coding series. We're creating a website from scratch with Python, Django, and the Wagtail CMS. Today, we're going to be learning about a new aspect of Wagtail, at least new to me, uh, called Stream Field. And I've been uh, pretty eager to, to delve into the Stream Field content, um, sort of content type. Essentially what it lets you do is define, I'm trying to find a picture here. Let's see if I can get one with a better picture. Here we go. It defines uh, content by breaking it down into little blocks, heading, paragraph, images, uh, even kind of layout related stuff. And at the end of the day, um, your content editor can arrange those blocks in any order having you know split content or even specialized blocks that you create custom blocks so I'll kind of scan through this um, tutorial on how to use stream field and wagtail I'm probably going to primarily rely on the docs it's pretty well documented uh, the main thing is taking one of your models, creating a new model or an existing model and defining a stream field. And within that stream field, it looks like we are going to pass uh, an array of tuples of block types. It's interesting that you can pass other metadata into this. Like if you want to assign a class, this might be something to learn more about for automatic styling. Essentially, you add your stream field as a content panel on the content type. So I just want to have a uh, quick note to any uh, Twitch viewer. It looks like we got one viewer already. I'm not sure how uh, viewers get to the channel so fast. It kind of makes me think there's bots that are watching these. But in any case, um, Throughout this session, I'll be mentioning a few times in the lower left-hand corner of the stream video, there's a command. It says uh, exclamation line, space, a line number, and a comment. That allows you to interact. Oops, wrong. Uh, oh, it's this one here. Uh, via Twitch and highlight a line of code on the screen. So just for demo purposes. I'll type this in the chat, line six. So that highlights uh, the line six and adds a comment there and I can see who in the chat added it. So yeah, if anyone notices any typos or has any comments or questions about the code, that's a quick way to get my attention. I'll also be uh, monitoring the chat. So to the one viewer out there, if you're not a bot, feel free to hit me up in the chat and I will gladly talk to you. Cool. So this content type we're going to be looking at today is going to be a new one to this project. So we're creating a new app. Let's go ahead and, and do that. Let's go. We're going to create a media library, which is basically um, kind of documents and videos or music, um, they could be PDF documents or other texts um, that aren't quite part of the Western Friend publication but are, are noteworthy or relevant. So we want to be able to have a library of interesting materials for people to browse. So let's get a little bit of tea. would be switch back and forth and I'm learning Django and Wagtail as I go so this is my first real official Django project I think it's like start app 
And what we've done on the other ones has been like a one word contact, home, magazine. So I'll just try this uh, similar pattern, media. Uh, I'm wondering if media, because media is more generic, it won't be confused with static. I don't think it's a reserved word or anything, so to speak. All right, media conflicts with the name of an existing Python module and cannot be used in an app name. Please try another name. Okay, well that answers that. So I guess we'll call it media library. And for some reason my shell is not showing underscores, which is a little bit annoying. Okay, very nice. Welcome to the new viewer. If uh, you'd like to participate, feel free to uh, give me a holler in the chat. Also, if you'd like to highlight a line of code, uh, go ahead and type that exclamation line, space the line number, space an optional comment, and I'll see right away what you're wanting to draw my attention to. Like for example, if there's a typo or something like that, it would be much appreciated. Okay, so now we should have the media library scaffold. So let's just commit this initial scaffold, scaffolding. Stuff. Oh, before I do that, let me get on a branch here. And there we go. Now I can commit in comfort. All right, have a sip of tea. So if we close this out, I'm not really using it. Um, we got an empty media library. I'm going to start on the model. I'm basically going to follow a couple of things. I'm going to follow the tutorial here and use the body field for the stream field. But also in our other models, like the magazine, let's take a quick look there for consistency. We've been using, well, page. Hmm. Yeah, if this is a page, then the title field is already going to be there. But believe me, the library items will be a page, so I don't need to worry about that. I want to inherit them from the page model. It would be kind of nice if Wagtail had a scaffolding command. Because this is just the default Django stuff. I don't quite always remember what to bring in from Wagtail. We'll need some of these. Oh, actually, they show, show us over here. That's cool, then. So we're going to have an image chooser. That's nice. We're building stream fields. The field is here used. And for our author, we have a, a collection called Contacts. We'll be using that. And then Date. Yeah, these are all useful. So I can pretty much copy, copy this verbatim. Now, do be careful when copying and pasting code. Reminder to myself, mainly. They read it carefully and understand what it's doing. I'm not sure that we need this models import. Yeah, we do right there, character field. All right, good. And we're inheriting page. We're using that there. We've got the stream field. We have blocks. Two of them. And why did we? Oh, because this came from a different place. So I tell core and why tell images blocks. Got it. Hmm. So let's take a, a little bit of a tour through the block types. This is always nice. Uh, Wagtail is a really well designed system. I've had uh, a lot of good experience so far in terms of the developer experience. Things have pretty much just worked. Uh, most of the problems I've encountered have been due to my kind of ignorance or little mistakes I've made. So we've got a block type we can kind of inherit, I guess. A label. 
Oh, uh, these are arguments, so I, I get it. Okay, so this is really nice. And I guess this mini, let's see if I can get a picture of this. I think there's one on the official website, in fact. There we go. <clears throat> so you can see in this picture, it's a little bit small. So you can open it in a new tab. When you're editing the a page in this case, uh, you'll have the page title and then this body or block field. And so we're going to be able to select from the blocks we configure here on the left hand side. And it looks like they have icons that it'll show. Come back to this. By the way, this is Wagtail website, Wagtail.io. Uh, briefly, it's kind of like WordPress for, for Django. Django doesn't come with a default sort of end user facing editing experience. Um, it has the admin interface, but that's not meant for end users typically. And Wagtail just goes above and beyond. Uh, just adds really remarkable uh, user ex editor experience, and the developer experience as mentioned was pretty. It's pretty nice, uh, just from Django in general. So if you're interested in the Python Django web web development, you might want to give Wagtail a try. See if you can get it uh, running on a project. It even comes with like its own API out of the box. So if you wanted to use a, you know. Uh, Let's say React Native or Vue.js front end or whatever. Uh, you don't have to write your HTML templates, things like that. All right, so it looks like you can group these together and you can make your own template for rendering. That'll be used, I'll probably use that later. In the magazine article, we're gonna have a pull quote, and I think I'm gonna be trying to switch the magazine article over to a stream field. So what else do we have? Character block. Single line of text. Multi-line input. Email, single line email input. Huh. Another numeric input. Floating input. Hmm, these are interesting. So you're almost constructing a form with these decimal. Is oh, this is pretty cool. So if you're wanting some kind of input that conforms to a particular structure, you can use a regular expression. Hmm. Okay, so this URL block I think is going to be useful for content or media library items because I think we could post blog posts. So heading is definitely cool. Um, I'll look at a couple of examples on the Western Friend website. So we have this library. I suppose I could have called this module library now that I, that occurs to me. library app. Hmm. Well, I actually kind of like that. Oh yeah, there's media. I didn't, uh, not sure why I didn't notice that the first time. So let me do this. Start over just a little bit. Ah, oh, blast. Let me see. I had committed that, didn't I? So, okay. It doesn't hurt. This is a good time. We're prototyping here, so that's the point. I could delete my branch, but it's not a big deal. I mean, I'm just going to... All right. So in the library, um, we have this faceted search interface. We're going to look into doing this. I think it's going to be a little bit tricky, but basically it counts the number of uh, media library items in various categories. So audience, 
you know, genre, and it's got inline searching with autocomplete, stuff like that. So we we spent a lot of time on this uh, authors, and we're going to tie these authors into our uh, existing contacts. Uh, so this is going to be quite a lot of work, but essentially what we have is. Um, this is going to render the media in line. It's a PDF in this case. Another PDF. Medium. So we've got audio. And these are, looks like these are links. So there's the URL one right there. Good. So let's come back over here to models. Another copy pasty. Weird. Must have been. Library app. That's more like it. I like it. One word. Library models. Copy pasty. Hmm. I guess this should just be library item. Now Mary had created a, a diagram. Uh, I'm not really referring to it right now, but uh, author. This character field. So what we're going to do is use this. Uh, this should be a foreign key reference. So let me go over to our to the contact model, and I have an example I can follow here under magazine models. I see magazine index page, magazine article. This is where I'm at. Authored by. So we're going to follow this parental many to many field. Related name. Media items. So we're going to break this under a new line for readability. And Black will do this kind of stuff for me also. But this would be like media items plural. Post date is okay. We're using on the magazine issue. Let me double check. I just want to use the same keywords in the project where possible. Tag magazine department and magazine. Index page, magazine issue. <clears throat> Publication date, so let's go ahead and do that. should all have a publication date. Oh yeah, we're using on the website here already. Good to go. Alright. What else we got? Let's save this. There it goes black. Formatting for me a little bit. Alright, so Body sounds good. Uh, I think we've been using body in the magazine article, for example. Yeah, it's right there. So this is uh, one example. This magazine body is just this kind of monolithic rich text field. It's just going to let you enter some HTML and kind of clean, you know, it'll sanitize it. 
and that works. That's like a way web content's been authored for a long time. But now, I think modern CMS is like recent versions of WordPress. I think Drupal has an interesting approach to this as well, if I recall correctly. And Wagtail, they're giving you more of like a JSON-based storage backend. Wrist rest keeps falling off the table. So let's go ahead and I'm just a little bit short for space here. Stream field with a heading. Now the page will have a default heading. I don't know if we need another heading. So I think I'm going to actually just delete that one. And I wish this was a little bit easier to find types, but there was a URL block. So how does this work? And hey, what the heck? Yeah, there it goes. I'm going to hit Control B and check, take a look. Not Control B, but uh, F12. Go to definition. Okay, so it does come with an icon by default. That's good. But I don't see any validation here. Super init. Ah, there it is. URL fields. So there's where the validation is. Extends a character field right there, and then the URL validator. I tell you, I used to use um, basically a text editor. Uh, I was using Atom for a long time, and when I switched to PyCharm, and now subsequent VS Code, this go-to definition has been really nice. F12 and VS Code. I think it's Control B in Py uh, PyCharm. It's encouraged me to get into you know, how things are working in the projects I'm importing from, whether it's a node module or Django core or Wagtail core. I can take a look at how things are working. Okay, so we got the URL, paragraph, and image. We could just take a quick look at how this is working. I'm going to get one more rich text block right there, actually. Quote block. Oh, they already have a quote. Really nice. Let's just preview this one. Mary's going to like this one. She does pull quotes all the time in the article. If I, if I pick a random article issue, I bet I can find a pull quote. Let me just double check. Yeah, right here. Boom. And we're wanting to carry this functionality over from the Drupal site. The thing is, this is all one big blob of HTML. So we're gonna have to figure out how to uh, port this over to the stream field, including, well, I'll have to, at some point, probably during one of these live streams, be parsing out this HTML to get all the paragraphs and things like that. Cool, so we have a block quote already, and this will be quote. And it's of type. That's a good way of getting this. And it's a tuple, oh, there we go. Choice block, drop down to select from a list of choices. Now this could be useful for selecting department or something like, or these other metadata, but I think we'll be adding the uh, 
metadata as fields. If I go back to the library, we have all these meta fields, audience, genre, medium, time period, and topic. Um, take it to author bio, yeah, print on these, maybe I have to import that. Model cluster fields. I think model cluster specific to Wagtail might have been a contrib module. So many to many because many authors can have, I would say one library item can have many authors and an author can have many library items. Spin through a couple more of these, see if there's something that jumps off the page at me. A page chooser, this would be kind of cool for interlinking the content. Document chooser, actually, I believe we would want. I guess some of these are PDFs. So this one I have to import. Okay, see how we did this. So Wagtail images, Wagtail documents. It's not alphabetized, but it's fine. So choose your block. Admin, T, core, documents, images, model cluster. Now, model cluster would kind of come before Wagtail, but it's somehow in my mind that Wagtail takes preeminence, so to speak, over the model cluster, whereas Django is higher in the imports list than Wagtail by just convention. So we've got an image chooser, and this document chooser block now is imported. Snippet chooser. We're not really using snippets right away. Ah, here we go. Embed. This is an important one because a lot of these are embedded media. YouTube video, Vimeo. So we'll need this one. Wagtail embeds. So Wagtail embeds. C D E. No particular order, I suppose. I should think about that, but for now, let's just me. Uh, media seems kind of well. It's a media. <laughs> Documents, images are also forms of media. Embed. Static block, doesn't have any fields, passes no particular values, doesn't have a very interesting struct. Fixed group of sub blocks might be kind of cool. We can have uh, substructures in the content model. That's pretty rad. This block. Ooh, nice. Once I start getting familiar with this stuff, I think this is going to be quite powerful. Stream block. Stream fields can have stream blocks. What? The. Oh, that's too meta. Too meta for me. Oh, that's really nice, actually. Uh, so yeah, when we're doing like a pull quote, I could have a sub block with a drop down that you, lets Mary to pick a how to style it. Like, oh, I'm not on that 
page anymore. But man, this is rad. And I'd have a custom template that would look at the styling choice and apply CSS class or alignment, you know, align right, align left uh, type of stuff. We don't need that for now, but I believe the struct block is going to be really useful. And maybe the stream block too, I don't know. And then custom blocks, this is rad. Okay, well, I think we've got a good start. And you sort of make your own custom templates for them. Yeah, and then you can check for values and apply a specific logic like template structure or probably, you know, styles, things like that. That's rad. Okay, I don't want to get too far out of my depth just yet, but let's start a little bit. So this should be authored by, we're going to display these fields now as content panels. So the default page content panels and these new ones. So I'm running the server and there's no real changes. So if I go open this, bring it over here. I don't have any content. This is a demo site. I've only been adding the basic content to get it started. So let's go ahead and make these migrations. But this is looking good. I think I've got everything in order. this library in this uh, settings base settings and that way it'll pick up the app in general and these migrations specifically mmm parental many fields not divine I hadn't saved it there it is. Okay, what's this say? This is weird. Okay, let me read a little closer. Authored by, oh no, that's the previous one. So yeah, this is just pointing me to the uh, oh yeah. Just gotta be careful. Read very carefully. So that's interesting. These content panels are part of the migration, even though they're only rendering in the admin. <laughs> We should have a new content type. Now here, the problem is going to be. Uh oh, I have to run the site. Yes, I can't really add media anywhere. If I go, for example, pages welcome, and I want to add a child page. Oh, it does let me live in the library. So we want to control that. But this is working actually. Somewhat. I need to tell what kind of a widget to use here, but that's working. Publication date, pages have title by default. The body consists of a stream field giving us multiple choices, paragraph, image, Document, embed, oh man, this is nice. A URL, man, this is really cool. And a quote, brilliant. And then you can reorganize them, you can delete them. Okay, so some room for improvement. I need to switch out the widget here to be a, I believe it's an auto select widget. 
need to I guess I'm gonna register it with the admin so that it appears here underneath like departments for example. And frankly departments can go into the settings near the near the groups I believe. We also need a magazine uh, media lib uh, library index page, media item, media index, something like that. And essentially, media items should only be able to be added under the media item index. Let's commit this, though. This is a good start. Contact migrations. We got in there. careful about checking that in because same timestamp but the wrong time is that UTC time or something yeah that's UTC we just went to daylight time. Damn. I don't want to lose. Uh... My changes to contact. This should have been merged. What the heck happened here? I didn't. I think I just didn't commit the migration. Contact. Damn. Hope I don't have a regression. This auto slug field. Override is true, that's the one. Okay. As long as that's there to go. Yes, there too. I think that's the main deal. and then altering the field of contact. Slug. Yeah, because prior the slug didn't have this overwrite. I believe that's all it is. Okay, so Commit these separately though, now that I know what that is. I left out of my old branch. I had just resolved that uh, issue and forgot to check the migration. That's something I, well, it's easy to overlook if I don't see it in the staging here or in the changed files. Now we got uh, initial uh, add library, so let's see, add library add. Initial library add and mock. And 
And there's a chance that I'm gonna have to throw all this out once I get review from Mary. Not that she's overly kind of critical, but the main reason we're prototyping here is to try things out and see how they feel and if it fits the model well. But from what I can tell so far, this um, stream field is the way to go. This is really cool, and I think Mary's gonna dig it. She's gonna get how powerful it is. Hey, what's up, Seb? How are you doing? I got a uh, new feature on the stream if you want to try it out. In the lower left hand corner, you can. Okay, cool. The tw you got my Twitter message. If you type uh, like exclamation, a line, and then space a line number and then space in a comment, it'll actually highlight one of these lines on the screen. So you can tell me how bad my code is. <laughs> and there it is. What? What is this? And then I'll just get my little magic eraser. Hmm, that's pretty rad. Yeah, I agree. They have another plugin for VS Code that has chat somehow integrated, but um, I've got the chat on my second monitor, so I think it's pretty easy for me to see when somebody sends a message. I'll leave that one disabled for now. All right, cool. So we got our migration in. We need to get an index page. Index. Yeah, this is a Python project. <laughs> I am not writing CoffeeScript. <laughs> I'm doing a little moonlighting in Python. <laughs> yeah, man, I think, uh, was it Crowducate partially written in CoffeeScript and we had to go and like rewrite the whole damn thing yeah this is that uh, yeah it's basically a you could call it a blog but it's a more of like an online magazine so a little bit different blogs are kind of flat with you know categories and tags this is not as flat it's got issues and then you got your articles in the issues and from there you got you know categories and kind of tags and departments and stuff yeah so it's slightly different but still a lot of similarities. Right now we're at a multimedia library because Quakers use the internet. We're not Amish. All right, let's see. <laughs> yeah, that's right, and I think when we wrote Creducate Next, uh, for some reason I think we still had CoffeeScript for a while. Maybe we were porting over the proof concept type code. I don't remember what happened. We gotta jumpstart that project though. Creducate Next. Creducate. I don't know. Uh, have you talked about uh, with uh, with Amir what uh, the status is of the project? We're gonna be doing some live code sessions. With Crowducate. All right, where am I? I am disoriented. There we are. Contact. I don't need the migrations. I need the model, which is there. And then I'm going to borrow from, let's say, the magazine. Yeah. Yeah, I thought uh, you were going to do that a couple weeks ago, yo. Come on, get with the program. All right, here we go. So I've got an index page for the magazine. I'm going to copy and paste a bunch of stuff, but not all of this. Oh no, this is very specific. It even has the magazine index is quite nuanced. This isn't necessarily just garbage code. This is actually meaningful stuff. It's good stuff. Because uh, 
briefly, the magazine issue, the latest, the, like the newest three issues are only for subscribers, but everything after that, everything older than six months is kind of basically public domain. So I think that's a good model. So that's basically what we're trying to do. 180 day threshold. So that's why I had to override the context, but this is relevant. I'll grab all that. Yeah, looks good. Looks good. Dun, dun, dun. Now, do you and Amir live in the same city, or, or how did you meet? Didn't you meet at a meteor meetup? Library index page. Oh, so it's on him. He's being, he's being the slacker and not getting back her. Your first ever meetup. Have you been going to the meetups lately? Anything cool going on in your neck of the woods? Nope. Yeah, me either. My city is kind of small. We got like 250,000 people here. I do work in Helsinki three days a week. Yeah, family meetup's good. That's important. Yeah, yeah, Helsinki. I work in Helsinki and live in Tampere. So we got an intro field. We're gonna show that intro field. But the children, the children, or the sub page types can only be library items. I think with library items, I'm gonna do a little bit of a thing here that they can't have any sub pages. So an empty array, I think is where you do that. Oh, oh no, errors, oh no. Rich text, rich text, hello. Rich text. There it is. Core fields. Oh, okay. Rich text. QRS. Alphabetize. Alphabetize. Boom. Linting or prettier? Hey. Yes, linting. Uh, it's, yeah, I'm using black here. When I save it, black's supposed to pick it up. Let's see here. So there's this black, which is kind of like, oh yeah, of course, don't just Google that because that's too broad of a concept. <laughs> but we have, um, the uncompromising code format. So it's essentially the prettier of Python. There's then there's just pep eight, which is more like an opinionated uh, yes lint. So like Airbnb rules, basically. If Airbnb were to have some sort of official status in the JavaScript community. Yes. Yes. But what's up with line 37? Do you see something there that I don't see? I don't see it. I don't see it, man. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> You're tripping me out. You're freaking me out here. All right, what's the other one? So... Library items should only be under the library item index. No, I don't know what the um, keyword is.
models. Parent page types to an empty list is a good way of preventing a particular page type from being created in the editor interface. Ah, that's pretty clever. All right, Sphinx, quit. You're highlighting, or whatever it is, highlighting this now. I guess I have to do this. Here we go. I was pretty much guessing correctly. So essentially, what the, see, did you see it? Black, watch this. I got three spaces there when I save. Oof, scoots it up a little bit. Very nice. Yeah. It's handy, I guess, but pretty bright that URL's base highlighting color was just like blindingly bright. All right, so media library item uh, is taking off. Now, wait a minute, I thought I imported this. What's going on? Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Library item index page. And really, the parent page types for the library item library index page. What do you think? Parents before children? I don't know. I don't think that's quite kosher. But what we're looking for is home. Dot. Home dot. Home page. So I can only ever add the library index page to the home page, and I can only have one of them. Keeping our content more or less on point. Keeping it well structured. All right, we got three viewers here. If you've just tuned in, we've got a handy highlighter tool. You can code along at home, or at least add annoying highlights to my code to tell me how badly I'm doing. In the lower left-hand corner of the stream is a command you can type, exclamation line, space the line number, space an optional comment. And as Sebastian so uh, helpfully demonstrated uh, a couple times already, it works pretty nice. My little IDE down here is listening somewhere. Line 47, absolutely helpful. Line 47, aha, that's a gotcha. If there's nothing on the line, it can't highlight it. <laughs> I learned that the hard way too. There's no spaces even. Oh, you have to do one of these. So you couldn't do 42, that's the one I, I picked before. But it was empty. It'd be cool if it showed a little like hover message or something because you know if I'm up here and you're highlighting line 46 or whatever I might miss it and probably it shows a little icon over here cool now we got an index page with an intro text it's got a title because it inherits from the page model it's showing our field panels for the intro field I've got some constraints on where you can add it and then that the library items can only be added under the library item index. So make migrations, make migrations. Yes. And then it didn't yell at me, so that's good. Migrate. So now, and I did those with the system running, so I'm not sure if it'll pick them up. Oh uh, yeah, remind me, I've got to switch this authored field to <coughs> over here. So I go to the, so this is the, 
home page, I believe. There's the home page right there. Wait a minute. Hmm. So let me just see if this is the problem. Rerun the server, see if it picks up the changes. I don't think I need to refresh. But adding a child page there won't work. Adding a child page to the home page won't work. Yeah, that's a, actually an interesting discussion because essentially um, not only people author things, but organizations and meetings. And in Quaker uh, parlance, there's several uh, types of meetings that depending on the group size and how often they meet. Worship groups are for like small um, groups of like, you know, usually five to 15 people who don't maybe have their own meeting house. They might be meeting in a basement of a coffee shop or something like that. Um, and then there's worship groups, uh, excuse me, uh, meetings, monthly meetings that are, they probably have their own meeting house. Maybe they have anywhere from 30, 60, 100 people, and they meet once a week. And then there's yearly meetings who have hundreds of people in some cases and meet once a year. And all of these organizations are capable of publishing things. In fact, that's one of the Quaker traditions is that they just write these letters uh, individually and collectively called epistles. So the authorship would be attributed to a group of people, like a yearly meeting. And just in general in publishing, I think um, we can find other examples where something is published by an organization. So that's all to say we blended our contacts. We made this generic contact bucket where we could combine the types of people and organizations who have come into contact with Western Friends specifically. And then just some nice stuff that Wagtail gives you out of the box to, to organize and uh, discover your content. Now, back to the uh, problem at hand. Why isn't this working? Is it because of this is wrong? If I look at, so you basically have to use the app name and then the model name, home. Let me just see what it does without it. And for these, I don't think I have to migrate. Migration to apply. Just let me double check. And it did reset when I changed that. I saw the server reload. So I'll just re reload the page. Go here. Um, add child page. Library index page. So yeah, so something, something's up. Both take a list of model classes or model names. Model names are of the format app label dot model name. If the app label is omitted, the same app is assumed. That's an interesting point. App label, okay. Yeah. I wonder if they mean name as the app label because this home app was auto-generated. It doesn't have a label. That could be the case. Sebastian laying down the law. Bringing the docs. Page, sub, page types. Yeah, app label. And my assumption was that the app label was what you would put in your settings. Like if I look over here, maybe right here, base, or oh, right here. 
All right, see you in a minute, Sebastian. Well, anyway. It's working now, and I can only have one page instance, so I don't think this will be too big of a deal if I just continue on the journey. Okay, let's go ahead and get this authored by field. I'll just commit these two things real quick. What do we add here? Dependencies. really cool field that I'm using over I believe it was on the magazine article to select authors so what is this magazine models let's find that git mob I need to go over to this tab for the outline magazine article authored by look for the content panels here it is autocomplete panel Brilliant. So this by default wagtail gives you just sort of a multi-select box and so uh, you can, I did a parental many to many field. The thing is, is this site's gonna have hundreds of authors so that's not gonna be very fun or efficient. So I'm just gonna do some more copy paste coding. Actually this one's closer to what I'm doing. Close these ones. and replace this author by field with this auto complete panel, which has not been imported. And for readability, particularly since I'm streaming and half of my field is cut off, half of my stream is being shared at least. This looks good, looks good. So you can multi-select contacts for the author art by field and did I already import that autocomplete panel? Huh. Nope, it's the only place. So where do we get that from? Right here. Well, actually autocomplete edit handlers. Uh, but this is a plugin, so let's go ahead and put it after Wagtail. I believe if I just reload this, we don't need migration for that. Yeah, there we go. So that just right away gives us a quick, you know, feel that I can search for an author. Boom. All right, Sebastian, thanks for stopping by. It's cool hanging out. Yep, see you around. I'll try to ping you again on uh, Twitter next time uh, I stream. Probably this weekend, maybe Sunday or Friday night. All right, peace out, bro. Okay, so let's just go ahead and create one of these thingy mabobs. Let's add a paragraph just because. Hmm, I'm tempted to embed something, but I don't want to get a copyright strike. I don't want to strike. So, dang it. Let's check out what this quote looks like. Hmm. Hmm. 
for image. Where did it go? There it goes. Ah, uh, we've already got an image there, so that's cool. I can use that. Mary's not gonna give me a copyright strike. Let's go ahead and publish this and take a look. View live. Now this is gonna look bad because I don't have the template defined. So let's go ahead and add this template now. Cut these changes though. What did I even change? I don't remember. It's been so long. Oh man. Okay, my thing is about to fall off the disk again. Auto complete panel. Auto. Complete panel. I'll just spell things like a normal human. Cool. Templates. Some HTML time. Basically, the tutorial has some stuff I can copy and paste. That's the best way to do it. It's going to be a little tricky, though, because of the various types of media I've added to this where are we page miles that's not the right thing where's my tutorial damn it there we go yeah they're not gonna give me help here <laughs> I'll have to figure this one out for myself Just scrolling real fast to see if there's a default way or a template helper to render these. I mean, there's got to be. Template rendering. All right, here we go. Here we go. Page body. For block and page body. All right, so just. All right, all right, all right. Come over here to the magazine templates. Magazine article. I can get a little bit from here. <clears throat> and what it's looking for is pretty sensible. Library, library item. It's just naming it after the Class. I'll need a library item index here in a minute, which is just this library. So we'll create both of those library index page and library item. Pretty straightforward. Media item one, look at that. It's already got slugs. Man, I didn't even do that. I didn't have to write that. So we have a new file templates library. Because you have to namespace it. What Django does is grabs all your templates through all your project apps and compiles them sort of into one directory, so to speak. So you just basically have to keep that namespace there for things to work. We have wagtail core tags, include block page body. So I believe this is necessary, include block tag. Stream provides HTML representation for the stream content as a whole. So it's gonna do those for me, as well as for each individual block. Hmm. To include this HTML in your page, do that. So what if I just do that? I also want the uh, title though. One thing I'm going to do is change these generic page uh, references to something meaningful like article, title, 
just to improve readability, but I don't know if I'm going to do that during this session. Just kind of focus here. But actually, I could do that with the uh, library item. It's not that hard. It, I just have to recall where to do it. I think it's in the meta. That's something that Django does. Ah, oh, man. Where have I done this? I think I've done this in the project, in fact. If I look at my models. I take a quick detour while this is fresh in my mind, because I am prone to forget the idea. So this one is just called a page. That's not a good example. Magazine. Magazine article. Again, that was the one I was just looking at. Department detail. Ah, here we go. Department. So if I look at the magazine department, panels, article be search field, article be label. Dude. weird because it should just be done right there in the model. Here it is. Okay, yeah. So I defined that view. Context object name. Context object name. I wonder if I can there's a wagtail specific way of handling this when I define the model or if I have to do it in the view. In which case, I don't want to define a view just to override the context object name. Let me double check. stuff up and Magtail, Wagtail does that for you magically. I don't want to do it just because I want clean semantics in my model or my uh, templates. That's another property here. Blast. All right. End of digression. End of detour. End detour. But this should work now. If I come back over here. Do, do, do. Hyper item, it's got everything it needs. So think about it, just refresh now. We should have something. Library, library item.html, library item. L B R E R Y. Save it. T M P L I T E S. It's just right there in the model library. Templates library item. Hmm. What did I do wrong? Still can't find. What do I collect static? That yeah, shouldn't matter.
Give me those, though. There it goes. A bug somewhere in my code. I don't think the click static was necessary. I think it was just because I um, reloaded the server. But okay, this is great. It's basically working. You got your rich text field, a quote that's in a block quote tag. So we could put some styling on that and it rendered the image correctly. Great. Uh, the other aspect will be to have a library item index and add that to the navigation menu. And then I'll probably call this a good session. Get some feedback from Mary. All right, so let's continue back, find some code I can copy and paste. I don't know that I need these body classes, but okay. I've been doing that as a convention. Cool. So this library item index is going to be a little bit, maybe a little bit tricky. Let's find out. So we're going to do this, create this, and to avoid typos, I'll just. Well, I mean, it could have worked either way, in fact. If I just new file right there, boom. And to reduce the likelihood of making mistakes, I'll just borrow from another index page. There's my environment. Why does that keep opening? Magazine index page. So this is a little tricky. I'm gonna copy and paste it and I'm gonna read very carefully. Ah, this is probably a bad one to do. Let's find a simpler one. So in the magazine we have also, or department, department index page. Yeah, it's luck here. All right, so we got extends base HTML. Did I do that? No, I don't think I did that on the other one. Which means that when I go back here, oh, I did, good. That inherits the navigation menu and all that good stuff. We want that, definitely want that. All right, so going back over here. Uh, Web tail core tags, block content, page title. Rich text rendering the intro because I've been using that same field. Uh, this is kind of a nuance of um, Wagtail, but essentially on the main page class, so right here, there are some, it comes with a couple of fields draft title, slug, content type. The main one that you can edit through the UI is here at the title. So all of these, since it's on the base class that I'm inheriting from in my model. They're accessible just through one dot. Ooh. But if any of the custom fields I define gone on my sort of inherited class, I have to use this specific keyword to get to them. So that's all we're doing there. And then we're piping it to rich text, which is going to sanitize it. Now there's no uh, departments, and this is where I created the model, uh, the view. So we can name that. Now, these will be children of this. So I believe I can do something like page dot. And is it kid children? What is it? Siblings. They're not siblings, they are. 
child pages. Sub pages? Oh, okay. Parent pages, so page rules, page URLs, and URL patterns. There's a way to get the, the child pages. I just want to use that without having to create another view. You can override the context, the template. The response. Specific instance of a page. That would be cool. Uh, for library items, I might want to actually create a verbose name. Class meta. Let's take a look at that. Ah, that's mm, it might just pluralize it. Query set ordering publication date. I don't need to do that. But that's cool. Actually, I might want to. Or the query set custom page manager. Damn, I didn't see anything about getting the child pages. Model reference. Ah, it's Django model reference. Copy. All right, I'm just gonna. Maybe I'll use my symbol browser. Get descendants. Page inherit from collection. Let's take a look. This is quite extensive. Abstract page, MP node, actually, it's page. Where's page? Orderable page. Let's just try to get descendants. Example here, query set. Oh, that's clean. Page objects, descendant. Get children. Yeah, right there. What the heck? <laughs> I don't know if I need this. I don't think so.
try to see if this works. Media item. And then there may be a representation of that. Let's try without that. Ah, uh, this is going to be triggered now, I was hoping, but. Should be a dot title there. Or the string representation should uh, print out the title. So there we go. All right. So the main thing we're testing here is if this page get children works. Which it should. If you have a page instance, you can get the children. Save it and refresh. Yeah, that worked. All right, media item one. Okay. All right, so back up a little bit and get that URL back. Let's take a look what we can do here. Department detail. So this should work. Media item slug. And instead of. Detail. I didn't create this. This URL though. Ah, uh, there's a wagtail method for this. That get page URL. a wagtail template tag and I believe I can just pass in page URL and then the media item in fact I don't think I need a slug so the wagtail page model does a whole lot and I believe and then this wagtail template helper wagtail core tag page URL will do a little magic for us here If that worked yep yep oh, okay really nice actually wasn't so bad this is just another example of the overall development experience I've had with wagtail uh, my main challenges have just been like you know learn how it works reading the docs and things like that uh, but the documentation hasn't been lacking uh, significantly the, uh, it's pretty thoroughly documented sometimes the search is a little bit clunky um, but other than that, once I get the recipe, things just work, and really remarkably so. Like, I have to write very little code to handle slugs. I mean, th this it does a lot for me. So the last thing I'm going to do here, and I have 541 changes. What? Oh, because I collect, I did collect static. It's not in my getting <laughs> Why does it keep opening this? I'm gonna. Money, money. Then add the link to the nav bar. I think that's pretty straightforward. Um, let's 
So do that top over here. I believe it's just in the home templates home page. No, where's my base template? I gotta find this base interesting mod. I think it's not even one of the modules. It's just like a, where did I put that? Surprise it's not here in settings. Oh it is right there, base HTML. Right there. Ah, and there's my navbar. Alright, cool. Uh, magazine, so it should come after the magazine. Yeah, and I just hard coded the um, the route there, so it's not as elegant as it could be. But there you are, there you have it. And then magazine, so now we have library. This is important, since these are hard coded that when we initialize the site content, it's gonna to have to, this slug's gonna to have to match that, otherwise things will not work. So again, this is not an elegant, I don't recommend, don't try this at home, basically. But there it is. Proof of concept and you know, believe it or not, this will probably end up being in the final site because I will forget I did it like that. Boom, there we go. And our initial media library feature takes flight. I can edit this page. I can, pay, I can, I can publish it, save, submit for moderation. All this stuff comes from Wagtail out of the box. Such a nice uh, content management system, very impressed. Uh, under really active development, the developers have been very forthcoming and friendly anytime I've asked for help or had an idea and things like that. So if you're interested in doing Python Django development, I highly recommend getting involved with the Wagtail project. It's just a really great, uh, really great project. All right, I'm just gonna commit this real quick. And that's it. So uh, thanks for everybody who uh, has joined the live stream. I appreciate having people in the room and uh, particularly thanks Sebastian for uh, being so active in the chat and highlighting random lines of code to keep me on my toes. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, I will respond to any comments or questions you have about the code or project. Uh, in general, when I'm doing these live codes and on uh, YouTube, I'm also just open to any kind of question uh, gen gen generally about development and whatnot. So you can kind of ask me anything uh, and we can go off on some tangents about different, you know, things you're interested in. If you've got a project idea that you'd like to see on the live code uh, session, let me know too. I can, uh, there's a few things I'm doing at my work that I haven't been live streaming. We're doing a little bit of work with, a lot with data visualization, a little bit with machine learning. Um, you know, mainly using Python and some JavaScript. So I can go more in depth into those projects. And if you like data visualization, check out our series uh, where we're working on Jerry Life. There's a lot involving data visualization in that project. Okay, well, thank you very much for joining and have a great day.